Welcome to Countdown to Daytona. I'm Dan Lucas. And I'm Kevin Conley. Dan, we are in the fan zone inside the Daytona <laughs> International Speedway. It is now the weekend and the activity level is starting to pick up. And one of the really cool things about the fan zone, you see all the families and you see all the kids out yes, here. Yes, yes. Again, Daytona really trying to do a great job to engage the next generation of fans. <laughs> and they're certainly doing that in the if, fan if zone. If you've never been to Daytona International Speedway or here for Speed Weeks, Every day it amps up more and more and more. The RVs get full, filled up. Uh, everybody's having a good time. And as you mentioned, they're really family friendly here as well. But it's also about good racing. And yep. we saw an insane race again in the last series. night in the trucks. We're going to see finish. we're going to see insanity today in the Xfinity. I can assure you that. Yep. And then tomorrow, the big one as we uh, close out the week, speed weeks here, as they call it, the Daytona 500. I want to introduce our guest today because I can't wait to talk to this gentleman, uh, right. Jordan Bianchi from The Athletic, who is everything NASCAR, I'm told. <laughs> Jordan, I don't know how much time they're giving us today, but you can talk until, until the sun goes down about this. I, I have nowhere to be, so if you guys want to talk NASCAR, <laughs> I'm here for it. This is exciting. This uh, is a great way to kick off the season. NASCAR is unique in the sport that it, its biggest race, its biggest event starts the season. That doesn't really happen in other sports. So kicking off the biggest race of the year with the, with the season starter, too, is, is really special. You know, the Vegas Insider odds are already out and they've 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 settled on four guys okay what do we got all right we've got Denny Hamlin Kyle Busch yeah um, Brad, Keselowski. Brad Keselowski and Joey Logano. Yeah, I mean, one. Those are the four. I mean, those are the four guys. If you're going to bet, you're looking at those guys. Those are the four best restrictor plate drivers right now in NASCAR. Kyle Busch is on that list. He's never won this race before. He's come close many times. Finished second here a year ago. Brad Keselowski, another name on the list. Never won here before. Won some races here, but never won here. But those are the four guys to look at. I'll give you another name, too. Is Kevin Harvick's another guy to keep an eye on. Fords are really strong in yep. practice. Joey, Brad, and Kevin all drive Fords. And and Ford drivers work extremely well together, and these races are won with teamwork. Yeah, Jordan, yeah, you mentioned practice. Yeah. You know, in practice, the Joe Gibbs cars, all of them went out yesterday, yep. stayed together. In the practice, they didn't go out and practice yeah. today. In the practice today, you saw all of the stored ha Haas cars running together, yeah. trying to figure out what they got. And that's what it's going to be. And it's interesting about the Joe Gibbs racing cars. You know, this practice is actually really underrated. This is a practice that a lot of people kind of blow off and say, you know what, we want to save our car. We don't want to wreck it for the 500, which I get that. But if you look at history, teams that have run this practice typically find that missing ingredient to win. It happened a few years ago with Toyota when they won in 2016 and dominated that race. So them sitting out worries me a little bit and gives me pause for concern that maybe they're missing something. The conditions today at Daytona, yeah. It's actually a little bit warmer than we thought it was going to be, but it's very blustery. And on the broadcast of the practice session, they said that the drivers were trying to figure out the wind. And uh, even uh, Jeff Gordon mentioned, hey, if I were practicing right now, I would want to get into front to see how this wind affects me. Right. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to have tomorrow, but is this a little more accurate, you think, what we're going to see race condition-wise? Yeah, it depends on the conditions. I mean, and that might be one reason that Joe Gibbs Racing Cars sat out, was the, the conditions are extremely different from today to tomorrow. There's nothing to be gain from the track temperature, the wind, anything like that, you actually can hurt yourself because you can make adjustments based on today that have no impact to tomorrow. You can take yourself right out of the ballpark. And this wind does play havoc with these cars. We saw this a few years ago. The Hendrick Motorsports cars in this race, 2016, were strong. But Dale Earnhardt Jr., Chase Elliott got in traffic. Their cars didn't handle right. It was a little bit of blustery that day. They ended up crashing out. So you have to be mindful of that. All right, we, saw, we saw the, the, the favorites, uh, Kevin. Let's uh, show you some interesting picks here, according to to VegasInsider.com. I, I love these names in this list because they're intriguing. That's right. You've got Eric Almarola, Jimmy Johnson, Ricky Stenhouse, but Almarola and Johnson 25 to 1. Ricky Stenhouse is a 30 to 1 pick. And then the long shot in the group. Hey, how about it? The <laughs> You're feeling sassy. John yeah. Hunter Nemechek at 100 to 1. Okay, just, I, I don't quite understand why you wouldn't like John Hunter Nemechek as he was last on that list because he's actually driving for a team in front yes, row motorsports. Yes. They run that, well. They run very well in these races. They put an emphasis on these races because this is a—they're a, a mid-sized team. They know they the most races, most weeks, they're not going to be competitive. They don't have a 
chance to win. But they come to Daytona, they've got a chance to win. And in fact, John Hunter's team, team, Hunter Nemechek's teammate, Michael McDowell, almost won this race a year ago. So right. those cars are fast. So if you're taking a complete flyer, why not throw five <laughs> bucks on the 100 to one I look, long shot? I look at Eric Almarola at 25 to one. He, is, he seems to always be in the mix. Crashes collect people, you can't predict that. But if Almarola gets to the finish line, he has a say uh, in the latter stages of this race. Absolutely, two career wins in the Cup Series, one at Daytona, one at Talladega, one here in the uh, July 2014 race. Really good here, drives for Stuart Haas Racing, teammate of Kevin Harvick, they work extremely well together. As I said, they're four drivers, the teamwork, the unity between those guys, very strong, they get it done. We saw that in the qualifying races on Thursday. They just have, they're in sync. They don't try to hang out each other to dry. They try to work with each other. I, I like Eric in this race, and if he won, would not be a surprise. Almost did it in 2018. You know, the very interesting thing, there was a news conference yesterday in the media room here at Daytona, and it was a lot of the, the Ford executives. Yes. Yep. And they talked about that it is a, it's a, it's a, almost a mandate. Oh, it's a, man it's, very, not a it's not top. almost, it is a mandate. From it the is. very top yep. for everybody four, to work right? together. One four, that was the yep. name yep. of the team. And that's across the board. It's not just a Ford thing, it's a Chevy thing, it's a Toyota thing. There will be meetings today, there will be meetings tomorrow where the drivers, the crew chiefs, the competition directors for all their teams are brought into a room and they are basically told, this is what we're gonna do, this is our plan, this is how we're gonna attack this race and win this race. And we've had different strategies. In the, in the Bush Clash last week, the Chevy driver said, you know what, we're gonna run at the back. We're gonna save our fuel, we're gonna try to be smart, we're gonna try to avoid the trouble, and that was their strategy. Now, it didn't work out for them, but that was the plan. So that's what they're crafting right now. And Chevy teams have had some issues working together the last few years. Last year at Talladega, similar to this, uh, in the fall, the Chevy drivers did not work together, and the order from above was, this is unacceptable. Right. So there is a, like you said, a mandate, come downing from above of, you guys must work together. We have a uh, poll you can vote on here if you're watching us today. Just pick your winner of the Daytona 500, and the early results say Kyle Busch <laughs> is the fan favorite. Denny Hamlin right behind him. Joey Logano coming in. And I'm telling you right now, uh, it always seems that Joey Logano is in there. If you're a Joey Logano fan, it's awesome. If you're not, you're like, there he is. He's always <laughs> there at the end. And of course, uh, in the duels the other night, he was able to get to that checkered flag. But he runs well here yeah. as well. And he could disrupt uh, the Joe Gibbs train, if you will, uh, when we get down to it. Yeah, you know, people like to say, you know, the Daytona Talladega races are crapshoots. You know? And I say that's not true. Yeah, there's an element of luck. And sometimes you do see some guys win these races that you're like, well, where did this guy come from? But I'll say this. You look at the Loganos. You look at the Keselowski's, you look at the Denny Hamlins, these guys win these races more often than not. There's a reason for that. They're good drivers with good teams. They know how to work the draft to their advantage. And to win these races, you have to put yourself in good position. Yeah, you get caught in wrecks sometimes and things work against you. We saw that in the Bush Clash. But these guys know how to put themselves in position. There's a reason why these guys win these races more often than not. You know, a little bit of while, a little while ago, we talked about the mandate and the team orders. When do the team orders go away? When is it every man for himself? <laughs> Is it five to go? Is it ten to go? Or is it the last lap? Um, that depends. <laughs> it, it, honestly, it depends because who's around you? Are there other Ford drivers? Or, if you're a Ford driver and you, you're surrounded by Fords and there's no other rival manufacturers, then it, the kind of the gloves are off. The last few laps just don't take each other out. But if you're working against each other, and I'll use last year's race as an example, Danny Hamlin and Kyle Busch are Joe Gibbs racing teammates for Toyota. Well, they're working against jo Joey Logano and Michael McDowell from Ford. Well, Michael McDowell and Joey Logano didn't play nice. They didn't work together well, and Toyota ended up winning this race. So, yeah, it, it's tough. There is no strict mandate, but Denny Hamlin won that race last year because Kyle Busch on the last lap basically kind of gave himself up and said, I'm going to protect Denny Hamlin. I'm going to protect my teammate and be his wingman. And without that, Denny Hamlin doesn't win that race. So it depends. It depends on the circumstances, depends on the driver. Some drivers more aggressive than others. It's a hard decision to make. Uh, don't forget, vote. Get on there, click, and vote for your favorite in this race. If we get some change totals here, we'll update you here in a little bit. Uh, Jordan, Jimmy Johnson, 25 to 1. Uh, we've been kind of treating this as the, the, the farewell, the yeah. swan song. He's saying, no, 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 guys, listen, it's the last day of 500, but I got other ventures lined up here. But first of all, if this guy is in the mix at the end, and we really haven't talked about Hendrick too much here so far, uh, is this a guy you don't want to be in front of if he has some help? Well, he, Jimmy knows how to win here. He's a two-time Daytona 500 winner, and he's got nothing to lose. Right. I mean, in the sense that wh who cares if you make people mad, right? You don't got to worry about that. 
<laughs> it's Jimmy Johnson. This place would roar, by the way. This, if he, yeah. Absolutely. This place would roar. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of drivers in this field that if they can't win this race, they want Jimmy to win this race. That matters. Uh, if you're Jimmy, you want to go out with a bang. Well, what better way to go out to win the Daytona 500? Yeah, I mean, Jimmy in Hendrick Motorsports, that organization, that team, they've had some struggles lately. But they are good in these races. Alex Bowman, Jimmy's teammate, starting second in this race. His other teammate, William Byron, won his qualifying race on Thursday. So the speed is there for these the, the, these four cars in the Hendrick camp, and that includes Jimmy Johnson. You know what's so unique about Jimmy Johnson is usually everybody loves a winner until a guy wins too much. <laughs> yeah, yes, agreed. But Jimmy has the respect of his competitors, and that's not that is he had to work at that sure. over his career. You know, and you make a great point. I mean, Dale Earnhardt, Darrell Walter, Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, all guys who won a lot of races and were booed. They were vilified by NASCAR. That you win too much, you're stinking up the show. That happened to Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson hasn't won a race in two plus years. Yeah. And if Jimmy Johnson won now, they seen him struggle, the fans did. They appreciate that. They kind of understand that this is his last draw. They want to see that. So it's kind of easy to go in this sport from go from villain to hero, and that's kind of what we've seen with Jimmy Johnson. Another name, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And, and when we showed the odds earlier, 30 to 1. Talk about a villain. Yeah, he yeah, can be a yeah. villain on he these can, tracks. You he can, can do it. He, he has can. To do it. We've but seen it. But, he, but Jordan, the other night uh, in the duels, he seemed to be in position to possibly uh, go after a win. I'm not sure where he stood when it got down. If we was trying to avoid trouble late, he yeah. said, you know what, you guys take this. But it seemed like to be he was in a position to maybe make a run if he wanted to. He did, but there was no need for him. His spot in the Daytona 500 is guaranteed on one caveat. He had to finish that duel with the car that he started with. If he destroys that car, he forfeits his starting spot. He goes to the back. He just needed to finish that race. He's got a very fast car. He's got a hand horsepower engine underneath him that means something and when you look at Ricky Stenhouse Jr. we talked about Eric Almirola this is a guy too like Eric Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is so good in these races he's won at Daytona won at Talladega and the thing that makes Ricky so good he doesn't care he's one of those guys who will go out there and push and push and he will be aggressive and he will take every spot he can and he doesn't care about hurt feelings he's out there to win for himself yeah the interesting thing about Ricky Stenhouse uh, his career was at a crossroads Absolutely. last year yeah. At the very end of the year, he was let go by Roush Racing. There was some certain, there was some uncertainty Absolutely. about where he would end up. He ends up over at JTT Doherty Racing, and you know he's in a pretty good ride. He is. He's in a good opportunity here to kind of you know rejuvenate his career a little bit. This is a good, solid organization. It's a middle class team, but they've got an association with Hendrick. They have shown that they can win races. They can be competitive. They haven't shown they can do it consistently. Well, Ricky's kind of the same way. He's shown it at times that he can do this. It hasn't lacked. He's lacked the consistency. He's got talent. He just has to put it together every single week. But coming here to Daytona with a new team, that's a great way up, great way to start it for him and a great opportunity because he is really good here. All right, right now, trailing in the pool a little bit is Brad Keselowski. And uh, I mean, unfortunately, I hate to say, I love Brad Keselowski because yeah. he's a funny guy to talk to for us in the media. But uh, yeah, he hit that ambulance the other day. And he just wasn't <laughs> in a great mood Wednesday at media day. But, yeah. fast but uh, he is also another guy on this track who is always in position yeah. and can and get there uh, if he has a little bit of help. He has, and he's had a frustrating speed week. Um, he crashed in the clash. He's had it, you know, the duel was okay, but it could have been better for him. A lot going on with that team right now in the offseason. They switched around their crew chiefs. Roger Penske was not happy with his three drivers' performance last year across the board. They had a good year, but not up to Penske standards. So there's a lot of pressure on those three drivers, that, those three teams to come out with a bang. This is a race that Brad has not won. He's won a lot of things in NASCAR. He's a former champion. He has not won Daytona 500. He is one of those guys who appreciates the history of NASCAR, and he knows to be recognized as a great driver, you have to win the biggest races. Yeah, and the funny thing about Brad Keselowski, a lot of people thought he was the one that was the driving force behind the, the big crew chief shakeup, but he had such a great relationship with Paul Wolf. What have you heard about well, that? Well, it was a lot of different things. You know, it, unfortunately, sometimes relationships go stagnant. You know, for all boyfriend, girlfriend, we all know those kind of things <laughs> go. Um, it was time for a change across the board. I mean, him and Paul had had some success, but it was time for Brad to get a new crew chief. Joey Logano and his crew chief, Todd Gordon, it was time for them. I know they won a championship a couple years ago. You just, there was something missing across the board. There was just that little bit that was keeping them from being as good as Joe Gibbs racing last year, and they needed to do something. They have three very good drivers, they have three very good crew chiefs. Mix them up, match them up, see if you can find that missing ingredient. There's so many rookies in this field. One way or another, they're going to be heard from, for better or worse. Yeah. And we've talked about John Hunter Nemechek a little bit, uh, poke fun at the odds, of course, but uh, not at his expense. But at the same time, I mean, does a rookie wind up at the end of this thing? You're, and you're going, oh, my goodness, this could happen. 
I would say no, but then I look at recent history. 2011, Trevor Bain wins this race. That was his second career start. Justin Haley won the last race here at Daytona last July. Now that was some weather came into play there, but still he won this race. I look at a guy like Tyler Reddick. He's with Richard Childress Racing. They put a premium on these races. Austin has won here before. They know how to win here. So is it a long shot? Yes. Is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. Yeah, the thing is about RCR, an RCR Xfinity car is on the pole today yep. with Myatt Snyder. So, yeah, Richard Childress Racing yeah. loves Daytona, and they spend a lot of money to go They fast do. Here. They circle this race as one they want to be good at across the board. This means something for them for a lot of different reasons. They recognize that to be good here means something for them. You know, it shows that, hey, you know, we've got the best motor in the garage because that's often what this can come down to. So, yeah, th th this is something for them. Well, we talked to a uh, truck driver yesterday. Ben Rhodes, who was in contention last mm -hmm. night until an unfortunate finish uh, towards the end, uh, he mentioned, you know, he's all of 22 and a veteran on that yeah. on that circuit, and he said, "You've got guys coming in; it's literally their first go at this type of level, and there's a certain way you have to kind of stand, stay away, but you want to help." Now, these rookies coming in at this level, is it the same, or have they acquired enough experience, you think, to go ahead and be a little bit more, uh, you know, confident and get in and mix it up? A little bit of both and we'll see that a little bit as, as things unfold. Tyler Reddick's a really good example of this. In his duel, he's a guy, Tyler's a guy who can be aggressive. You know, his car owner Richard Childers compared him to Cale Yarbrough, who was a hand up on the wheel kind of guy, went after it. Tyler's the same way. But Tyler picked his spots in his duel. He was very conservative early because he didn't want to put himself in a bad spot. In the middle portion of the race, he kind of went after it a little bit and then they scaled him back in a little bit and said, you know, we want you to fall back here. We don't want you to do anything to that car. So it's tough, but there are so many different things. There's a lot of guys in this race that Tyler's never raced against before. A lot of different nuances of this kind of racing that he's not experienced. Xfinity Series is very similar to Cup Series, but there are enough differences where you, it, it takes a while to get acclimated. You know, the thing about that rookie class, they're talented, but they're also in good equipment. Yes. you got yeah. Christopher Bell, who is basically in a Joe Gibbs yes. car. You've got Cole Custer, who is in a Stuart Haas car, and you have Tyler Reddick, who is in a RCR car. So. They're young, they're talented, but they got good equipment. And that's the thing, and, that, and that's why it wouldn't be a surprise if one of these guys came up and had a good run tomorrow, because as you said, they are in good equipment. They've shown to be very good drivers. They know how to get it done. And I will say about all three of those guys, they are not afraid to be aggressive when they have to be. All right, let's become the political insiders, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, the president is coming tomorrow, and uh, I know people are pretty pumped up here, and, and, and there's all kinds of, well, he may attend the driver's meeting. Yep. He may go around the track. Uh, he's definitely going to wave a lot. Yep. Uh, two things. Uh, have you ever covered an event where, where you have that come in like, you know, it's such a last minute thing that's going to change the routine? And also, how do the drivers handle this? They probably think it's pretty cool, yeah. but it disrupts guys who love routine. It, it does. I've never been at a race where presidents come, so I'm very interested to see how this unfolds. And I think, I do think it, there is politics aside that the President of the United States is coming here to the NASCAR season open, the Daytona 500. That does mean something, politics aside. I think for drivers in the routine, they're used to this in some levels. They're, you know, pre-race at Daytona 500, it is filled with dignitaries. They're used to a lot of big names here, glad handling, that kind of thing. So you say hi, you move on, it's a quick thing. I don't think they're getting too far out of their routine. Yeah, the thing is, uh, you know, we, when you think of NASCAR racing and you think of it being loud, yeah. but you know what? It's so loud, it's probably actually quiet for those drivers sure. inside the car because everything else is drowned yeah. out. And it does take that level of focus to be successful. It, it does. When they walk out on the grid, they're done shaking hands. They're done, you know, kissing babies. They're, they're <laughs> done being nice to all the celebrities that are going to come through here. They're focused on what they do. When you get in that race car, you put your earbuds in, you put your helmet on, it's tunnel vision, and you can tell it looking at their eyes. Well, Jordan, before we say uh, thank you, uh, I know you're at The Athletic, you got several projects in the works, uh, a lot of stuff that NASCAR fans that are watching us right now, so tell us some of the stuff you have out there right now and some things you're working on that they can check out coming up, because I know they're going to follow you after this, Jordan Bianchi uh, at The Athletic, and uh, so what kind of cool inside stuff you got going on? Well, I published a great story today about behind the scenes with NASCAR, it was up in the scoring tower for the Bush Clash, it's something that really hasn't been done before, seeing how officials officiate the race, how they call a race. And I did a bunch of little things behind the scenes that you probably don't even think of when you go to a NASCAR race. Highly encourage you to check out theathletic.com. And then a future story, 2021 schedule is going to be very different, people say. What's that going to look like? Where the NAS where's NASCAR, NASCAR going to race? Street courses, road courses, some more ovals. I will have the info for you in a couple weeks on theathletic.com. I'll tell you what, I I'm a big fan of The Athletic. 
you know, if you're not on, if you're not on it, let's say let's say you're just a sports fan. Yeah. If you're not on it, there's there's something of interest yeah. for you on the athletic. They're, goes, they're, kind yeah. of, they're kind of a late player to the media game that's only been around what five years? Yeah, four or five years. Yep. You know, but uh, you guys well have stolen it. the well best writers. You stole. Well, all they, they have everyone but me. But yeah, we have a we have a, an incredibly talented pool of writers across the board. And I will say, I became an athletic subscriber years ago because I love college football. I'm obsessed with college football, and they have a great talent there. But every sport, it is the best of the best. Um, and I encourage you, if you are a sports fan, you're going to find something you like. Yeah. And monthly subscriber fee is incredibly low. Plus, we got a 40% discount this week. All right, real quick, before you go, who do you like? Who I've you been riding pick? Logano all week. I, I, I called it before the clash. He's in a Ford. He's with Penske. He's won this race before, and he's always good in these races. All right. I, I think that's a pretty good pick. <laughs> you went on the record, didn't you? I, last night uh, <laughs> I, in my on my station in North Carolina, I went with Eric Almirola. I like it. Wow. I like Eric. Wow. 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 My colleague Jeff Gluck at the Athletic picked Eric too, and I, I really do think that's a good pick. Oh, I'm being told to make a pick. I got people <laughs> on the other side of the camera that are looking at me right now. If I, say, have to. if I say Joey Logano, I'm going to get laughed at, but that's who I said yeah. the other day. I thought, well, this fine. looks pretty good. There's I'm taking yeah. that. But the people that, are, that, are, that I'm interested with in my personal mm -hmm. uh, pool, uh, they might have already thought Joey Logano, but I'm going on the record worldwide. I think Joey Logano <laughs> wins the day's on a 500 yeah. on Sunday. I think he's good. I think both of his teammates, Brad Keselowski and Ryan Blaney, are going to be players as well. Uh, you know, by and large, I don't necessarily pull for one driver in particular. I always pull for a good story. That's all I uh, care about. Uh, I, I, whatever the story is, I hope it's a good People story. ask me all the time, who's your favorite driver? Like, I don't care about the driver who wins the races. I care about the best story. That's what I want. <laughs> good. Jordan, this has been wonderful. Awesome. Uh, we really appreciate your time today. And uh, again, you can read Jordan Bianchi on The Athletic. Get on uh, Twitter. He's very active on that. And like you said, he's got some good stuff uh, in the works going on right now leading up to the Great American Race. So, Jordan, thank you very much. And uh, we're going to listen now to, you know, as we've been talking about the Joe Gibbs guys, yeah. uh, not doing too much today, but a lot of talking. And ironically, uh, a couple of those drivers talked to us on Media Day about that relationship off of the track and why this team is so tight and really is just so good. Um, as an organization, we do do that a lot. We have our team meetings every single week, and, and we push and we prod, and, and we try to work on our guys as hard as we can to make sure that they're working on the right things for us drivers. I complain about things that, that I have in my car. Denny complains about things that he has. We, we all do, and <laughs> we're, pay, we're paid complainers. That's, that's what we get paid to do because the more we complain, the better that they can work on our cars and make us faster and stronger. So um, it's an interesting battle there, but, um, you know, our group is a really good group. Um, we had a great season, that's for sure, last year and had really fast cars and won a lot of races. And, uh, you know, I, hopefully we can do it again. That's the biggest thing. You know, sometimes you get out front and you're worried about, you know, guys behind catching up and you falling behind and getting complacent. But uh, I think JGR always does a good job of that continuing continuation of development. You know, we never really seem to sit on our hands and, and wait for everybody else to catch up. We seem to keep moving forward. So I hope that's the same case. I hope we can do the same thing this year and have, you know, just as good a car as All right, so the Gibbs drivers, uh, you know, one guy we haven't talked about, Martin Truex Jr., who has run well here in yeah. the past. He's had that close uh, to, to a win in the Daytona 500, 14 to 1 odds, according to Vegas Insider, and also Ryan Blaney, who I've always thought of as a, as a dark horse kind of at Daytona yeah. because he's earned his way into the discussion with good runs here. Yeah, without a doubt. And, you know, he is a part of the, the, the Penske organization. He's driving a Ford. The Fords have been very, very fast. They certainly were in practice this afternoon. We did see in the group, in the draft, speeds up over 200 miles an hour. Yes. Um, so uh, that that certainly will play a factor tomorrow's speed. You know, it's funny. You got, you got William Byron. You know, wins a wins a uh, duel. Uh, Alex Bowman gets on the front row. Uh, but we just we're not giving them enough credit for the Hendrick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, leadership. You know, Chase Elliott is the the best odds out of all of them. And uh, you know, Chase has run well here before. He was a, on the front row. He's yeah. won a duel. Uh, I mean. I don't know which Hendrick driver carries the load here. I'm curious yeah. about Hendrick because they were the team everybody was jealous about in the glory days, which can come back like that. Yeah, it can. You know, I think a lot of it, you know, when, when Chevrolet switched to the new Camaro, there's a learning curve. Yeah. You know, whenever you, you make a major change like that, and then they did again, they made some modifications to the Chevy Camaro for this year. 
changes that should make it a better race car. Right. And uh, and they're they're very confident going into this weekend. But the thing with Chase Elliott, I mean, that would be a very popular win. Jace Elliott is NASCAR's most popular driver. Yep. He's got the great family history. His father, of course, has a great history here at Daytona. Bill Elliott won this race several times. Uh, that would be a very popular win as well. All right, so Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, uh, Vegas Insider says, pick them <laughs> out of that four. 10 to 1, 10 to 1 uh, for those odds. And then uh, we had shown some other numbers earlier as well, some, some numbers of interest. Jimmy Johnson, 25 to 1. Eric Almarola, who uh, he, he's got to get over the hump, and he'll be in that elite Daytona category as well when he does. 25 to 1. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., pole sitter, at 30 to 1. By, by the way, we were just discussing Hendrick. Ricky Stenhouse gets out of the car after his yeah. fast lap the other day, says, Ooh, that Hendrick engine. Yeah. They know how to build some engines, man. Yeah. They run fast in that lap, for sure. Yeah, it's, you know, starting out front and being out front ahead of any of the of the, the big wrecks, because you know, we're going to have them. Yes. We've seen them already to this point in Speed Weeks. But to be out in front and be ahead of those wrecks, that's critical. All right, very good. We're, uh, tomorrow we're going to come to you uh, right before the race. I believe we have a uh, 1230 start time okay. tomorrow for Countdown to Daytona. So be sure to check that out. We're going to try and get you. We're going to try. We were going to interrupt the president. <laughs> and we're going to try and get a driver out of that meeting. And we're going to try and bring him out. We'll do our best for you. We'll see that's what we right. come up with, because it, before the Super Bowl, you don't get to talk to a player right. a couple of hours before they kick no. off. Watch what happens. We'll do our best, we promise. That's right. But uh, check us out tomorrow here, right back here uh, on your uh, site that you're following and on Facebook as well. Thank you for watching us today and, and voting as well in our poll. It's getting loud and fun here at Daytona, Kevin. Uh, you know what? There's a lot of activity <laughs> that builds up to the Daytona 500. But boy, it is so worth it. It is such a big race. It is such a fun afternoon. I can't wait to see the 500 tomorrow. All right, we're getting ready to roar with the Xfinity Series uh, season opener, and then tomorrow the biggie, the Great American Race. So for Jordan Bianchi and Kevin Connolly, I'm Dan Lucas. Have a great rest of the day, everybody.